Hello everybody, this is the Photoshop Workbench. I'm Mark Johnson. Thanks for watching. In today's tutorial, we're going to explore a quick, easy, and delightfully fun method for popping almost any subject from a photo, resulting in a clever three-dimensional effect. Best of all, no actual 3D tools or skills are required to achieve this look that you see right here. So you can see we've popped this subject from the photo and here is where we start. So let's go ahead and dive in and have some fun. Now when you do this um, I think it works best if you have a subject who is in contact with the ground plane and you'll want to have an actual uh, background behind the subject. So um, anything like that has great potential. Alright, we're gonna duplicate our background two times. So we're gonna press Command J twice on the Mac or Control J twice on the PC. Now we want to make a new blank layer. So we're gonna hold down Option on the Mac, Alt on the PC, and we're gonna click right here. And the reason we're holding down Option or Alt is so we can get this new layer dialog. And we can go ahead and name this layer Border. And we're gonna be using this layer in just a moment. So we'll press OK right here. Let's go ahead and drag the border layer right down below the top layer and just leave it deposited right there. Now let's go to the background layer and we're going to fill this with black. So black is my foreground color. So I can fill with that foreground color by holding down Option Delete on the Mac or Alt Backspace on the PC. Now, I didn't see any change there, but if you look in the Layers panel, you can see that the background is indeed filled with black right now. If you prefer menu items, you can choose Edit Fill, and you can use black right here. The reason I don't generally do this approach is because I, more often than not, I have this Fill dialog set to uh, Content Aware, and so I kind of like to leave it set there, and that's why I like the keyboard shortcut for filling with the foreground color. All right, let's go ahead and activate this border layer. And we are going to switch off the visibility for the layer above it. Now, we're going to drag out a rectangular marquee selection that is going to start about, and this does not need to be precise at all, but uh, probably about um, one-sixth or one-fifth of the way in. We're going to drag here from the bottom and we're going to come up and we're going to go and cover up about 75-80% of our subject and then we're going to end over here one-fifth or one-sixth of the way from this edge. Again, doesn't need to be precise but I just wanted to give you that information. So here is the rectangular marquee. I am going to begin dragging right down here. By the way, as long as my finger stays on the mouse, I can move around this box instead of resizing it, which is mouse only. I can actually move it around by holding spacebar and mouse. So say I wanted it a little bit more over here, I can do this. And then I can come out to here, maybe to right there. And then let's go ahead and drag that down just a little bit to maybe right here so that, again, 75 or 80 percent of the lower portion of the subject is inside the selection. All right, I'm going to let go. And we want to uh, stroke this selection. We're going to be creating a white border for our kind of our flat two-dimensional photo so that the subject can pop from this border, from this flat two-dimensional photo. And so we're going to choose Edit, Stroke, and the width of the stroke depends on two things, the resolution of your document and how thick you want your border to be. So I'm working on about a 2,000 pixel wide document here. I've practiced this. I want this to be 20 pixels wide. Play around with it. If you don't like the initial result, you can just Command or Control Z, come back and change the width to exactly what you want. So I'm going to go with 20 pixels here. Click right here, choose white, press OK, and I want to make sure this is set to inside. Now I'll go ahead and press OK. And you see now I have a border um, that we're going to be able to work with here in just a moment. If you want your border to be thicker uh, or thinner, just undo and go back and, and redo that particular step. Let's get rid of these marching ants. I'm going to choose Select 
deselect or command or control D. And now we are going to transform the perspective of this border. All right, so we're going to choose edit, transform and perspective. And I'm going to drag the upper left or upper right handle inward to give this a three dimensional look. And I'm going to come to the lower left or right handle and drag it out like this. Maybe out to there. Let's go in just a notch more here. Now, this is the portion of the subject that's going to pop out of the photo. And I want a little bit more to pop out. So I'm going to control or right click inside this bounding box and choose scale. And now I'm going to drag the top center handle down so that I can pop a little bit more of my subject out of here. I want all of this portion up there to pop out. Now I'll click the check up here or I'll tap return or enter to commit the changes right there. All right, now we want to pull a selection off of this border layer. So I'm going to hold down Command on the Mac, Control on the PC, and click right here on the layer thumbnail for the border layer. But we need to invert this, so we'll choose Select Inverse. And we need to further modify here um, by getting rid of this area out here. So I'm going to choose the Magic Wand tool, hold Option on the Mac or Alt on the PC, which allows me to subtract and I'm going to click right out in this space here so that all that is left is basically the interior of this almost I guess you could call it like a Polaroid photo to a degree or or a photo inside of a border here alright so we've got what we want now we are going to make the bottom subject layer active and click here on the front loading washing machine icon to add a mask. All right, you can see we now have a two dimensional photo right there. It's sort of leaning back in space. And we need to do a few more things to make this actually work. So we are going to uh, turn on the visibility for the top layer here and go ahead and activate the layer. Now we want to select the subject. All right. So we are going to use the quick selection tool to do this. If you want to learn all about the quick selection tool and then refining the edge in a beautiful fashion, be sure to check out Photoshop Workbench 330. I have it listed in the introduction for this workbench with a hyperlink. So you can get to Photoshop Workbench 330. It's going to tell you a lot more than what I'm going to cover right now. now. I want to select the part of the subject that is going to rise out of this area here. All right, so I need to select the top. So I'm going to go ahead and paint over my subject using the quick selection tool. And I want to make sure that I get plenty of real estate here, plenty of the subject selected never hurts to select too much. You don't want to select too little. So I'll do that right there and I think that'll cover it. Now I need to just get this area right here. And I think that just about does it for selecting my subject. Now let's go ahead and add a mask to this top layer by clicking on the front loading washing machine. Now you can see you have a subject who is popping out of a two-dimensional photo. Awesome. You could stop here, but we're not going to stop here. We're going to do a few more things to make this even more interesting. So what we're going to do is we are going to um, refine the mask. Like, let's say you looked at the edges here at 100% magnification, and you didn't feel good about the way the quick selection tool uh, made the selection. So you can activate the mask for this subject layer and choose Select Refine Mask. Again, I go into Refine Mask in great detail in Photoshop Workbench 330. We are viewing this on layers. That means we're seeing it out as it's composited. Now, most likely what you're going to want to do is you might have a little bit of an, a rim or a um, fringe to your subject. And so you could shift the edge one direction or another. I don't have that problem here, but you may need to do that. You may also want to soften the edge just a little bit. 
And if you need to do that, then you're going to use feather. I'll do it too much so you can really see that happening. I might do just a touch, just a hint of feathering right here. Everything's looking pretty good in my pop-up area here, so I don't really need to do much. But you may want to play around with the feather, the shift edge slider, the contrast will actually bring back more hardness to the edge. And you can even play around with this radius slider just to see what it does. It works occasionally and definitely works great when you're working with difficult edges like hair or fur. Now we want to go ahead and output this to the layer mask. It's going to update that layer mask right here. Let's see if we can even see any difference. Here's a moment ago. Here's now. Really subtle. I didn't do much at all because I didn't need to here. Now if we want to get creative with this, we can go to the background layer and we can add a gradient to it. So if we want to add a gradient to this, the most flexible way to do that is to click here on the lock, just single click to unlock the background, and then go down to Layer Styles, which is FX, and choose Gradient Overlay. Now in the Gradient Overlay, we want to make sure it's set to Normal. We'll go ahead and leave our opacity at 100% here. I am working with the black to white gradient. Click OK there. I've got a linear gradient. You could certainly play around with radial. I have mine reversed, but you can see what's happening there. There's one versus the other. I'm coming straight down, so I'm at a 90 degree angle. I can scale this, which controls the softness of the edge. And I can even move it by dragging right in here. And I can put a gradient up behind my subject, just like that. And because this is a layer style, if I press OK, I can ch make changes just by double clicking right here. And there we are. We can come right back in and make further changes. So that's a way to put a gradient there. But let's try something else. Let's try adding a texture. So I'm going to go open up a texture now. Oops, that's not my texture. Where is my texture? There it is. OK, this is from the Bella Fleur. Belle Fleur collection of textures. I have a link to Belle Fleur um, in my introduction as well. And the nice thing is, if you go through my discounts page, you're going to receive a 15% discount if you use the code that I have listed in the introduction. So um, that will give you 15% off any of her wonderful product, uh, products. Here is a texture I'm going to use. I'm going to go ahead and just choose Select All and then Edit Copy. Now I'm going to go back over to here. I'm on the basically the background layer and I'm going to choose Edit Paste. Now let me scale that just a little bit. It's a little bit big. I'm going to Edit Free Transform or you can do Transform Scale. It really doesn't matter. And I want to just bring this bottom up a little bit there. And then tap Return or Enter. There we go. Alright, so I've got a texture in there. I like the way that looks personally better than the gradient, but it is entirely your creative decision. Let's do two more things. If you want some of this original background to show, which I think is kind of cool, then what you can do is you can double click right here on the mask for layer one. This is the subject layer, not the pop out subject layer, but the two-dimensional photo subject layer. Double click on this mask and then pull the density slider down and you can get whatever mix you want. You can get full background, pretty good amount, or in my case I'm going to go with just a subtle, very subtle amount of the background there. Just like that. And if you look at this mask, we actually just turned this area out here gray by pulling the density slider and we did it in a totally non-destructive fashion because this mask panel here, if I double click there, it's always available and that density slider is not going to change. Pretty sweet. Alright, so to finish this and get the look of this right here so you can see the difference between these two. That's looking good but a little flat and this is looking more dramatic. Um, I actually finished the scene with Nick Color Effects Pro, which by the way, very recently has become completely free to everyone. That's right, you heard that correctly, free to everyone. In my introduction, I have a download link 
so you can go download your free copy of the collection and if you want to learn how to get that dramatic look that you see right here watch Photoshop Workbench 330 it's called Finishing a Portrait with Nick Color Effects Pro. I have a link to that in my introduction as well. So that concludes our process of popping a photo from a background. Or po I should say popping a subject from a photo. <laughs> anyway, I hope you have a marvelous day. Thank you so much for being with me. Take care.